Awake, O oh dead, for there can be no rest for ye beneath the earth. Let the splintered bones burrow from the grave. Let cold fingers grip time-worn blades, and unseeing eyes survey the fears of slaughter. For your time has come once more, and the dead shall walk again. Hello everybody on this 10mm Vampire Counts Black Knight tutorial on how to paint this heavy hitting fast undead cavalry unit for your War Master collection. The models are provided by excellent miniatures and I paint them on a standard where I like my army to be. You can always leave colors at stages you like and don't have to go all the way through the effort. But I like to provide you with some additional steps to give even this small scale miniatures the respect they deserve. As you might recognize throughout the video, English is not my native tongue. I speak this as my first foreign language. And so you might excuse some mispronunciation or when I struggle to find the right words. On the left upper corner, you always see the color I use or the color example that's part of the Citadel range by Games Workshop. And now let us dive in to these undead skeleton hordes. With the already primed cavalry stripe on my painting handle and I start applying Steel Legion and wrap a dark khaki tone on all the bone and wood areas because some of these elements are underneath the model and I want to pick out all these colors before I move to further steps. The whole video is on about 200% of the normal painting speed and I show you on the front guy what is to paint and some of my painting techniques and in the camera off time I execute this steps on the back guy the most time. Second step after we applied Steel Legion Wrap is the metal parts. Silver metal on the horses, shields, lances and whatever is based out with Iron Warrior, a real dark metal color tone. And I paint these metal tones because I want to use pigments for rust. And this is a real messy step, so I prefer to paint those areas at the first place before I go to any textile structure and other stuff. Just apply the Iron Warrior followed by a light highlight of Lead Belcher where I focus my attention on the lower parts of the armor panels at the horse side and on the upper parts of the skeleton's armor and the horse armor on the upper parts. On some occasions I will go out of focus with the miniature. I hope you can excuse this. It's real, real hard to get a clear focus on such small thingies. And uh, after this color is applied, I go to pigments straight away. Pigment powder is available by AK Interactive, Vallejo or whatever company. And I pick a brownish pigment color to get a light coat 
of all these metal parts, it's really, really diluted with water. So it's like a shade. And after that, I apply a reddish brown, a rusty red layer in some of these recesses where all the rust should have gathered over the centuries. After the pigments are dried, this is the result and I go to all the textiles. I start with the red parts. All the red parts are painted with Gal Vorbach red, a burgundy red wine color tone that give a good base to the following steps, because I don't like to shade much of my miniatures. I applied two coats for better coverage of the color and I have to say my colors are kind of pre-thinned in the painting pods with some Lemihan medium or other thinner medium that are available by several brands so that you don't go bonkers way when you can see a painting pod in the video later. While painting these textile parts, don't forget to paint the inside and underside, because sometimes they show through in the later stages. Next step is a dark red, corn red in this occasion, where I go on a heavy highlighting step on all these folds and I paint this on with two coats. Just leave the Gal Vorbach red in the recesses and underneath the horse. After everything is done, there is even brighter red. Mephiston red, a signal red where I duplicate the previous step, but I let show through some of the corn red that's been painted before so that I get a smooth transition on the textile parts. Maybe you want to ask, Dizzy, which brush size are you using on this? I use a Lupri Master Dreikant Rotmada Kolinsky size 0 for all the painting purposes that are not heavy duty like base painting later. This step is Wild Rider Red a bit of an orange red where I paint in some edges, some of the ragged cloth edges to give him a used look. And here and there you can paint in some lines where the structure of the cloth is damaged and light will reflect in another way than on the maybe nearly undamaged surfaces. Apply this paint on all the skeleton and uh, then we go to the banner cause there I want to use a bit more of a highlight, a bit more contrasty paint with Fire Dragon Bright cause all my banners should pop in the midst of the battle. I use this color to give some more of a damaging effect on all the edges and paint in some reflective effect on the blood droplet there on the banner as you have seen in the right lower corner of the droplet and here I get some more highlight points and small line pieces on the Banneth cloth that has been heavily damaged before.
If you like to invert the color scheme on this banner, you can also go with a black banner and use the steps from my uh, tutorial on painting black. That's showing up in a second. To finish the banner, the blood droplet gets a bit of avalanche sunset in the lower right corner of the blood droplet and on the opposing side, the left upper corner, there will be a small dot of palette witch flash to give the illusion of a gemstone effect. I think it suits Val very well on this banner. After all the red textiles are done, I go on to the black ones and cause some of these pigments and uh, painting bone stuff is really messy. I rework all the black surfaces with Abaddon Black, a real dark black tone by Citadel. There is the textiles on the horse sides. There are the uh, details on the banner, these goblet, and also the wings up there. After this, I go with a heavy highlight with Corvus Black, or in this occasion with a mix tone of a kind of 60 to 40 Abaddon Black and Ashing Ray calls my Corvus Black is empty and due to Brexit and the availability of Games Workshop Citadel colors here in Germany it's a kind of compromise that I use this mixed color tone. But I think it's nearly the color gradient where Corvus Black is located. Nearly the same steps as on the red cloth before. Heavy highlights here and there and on the goblet and the wing on the banner I tend to use the right upper corner of the goblet and the left upper corner of the wing for this detail to give it a bit of a non-metallic metalish vibe. Next step is Ashen Grey to give it the ragged up corners like with Wild Rider Red before. And as you can see here, some small lines and dot on all the surface edges and some lines painted inside the surfaces to give the illusion of scratches or ripped cloth. And, as I mentioned before, the banner application is painted on the left upper corner of the wing and the right upper corner of the goblet on this side of the banner you see right now. Last part on the black surfaces is the next color, it's Dawn Stone. This color is used for some additional highlights here and there where the clothes is really ripped and tear down and uh, I use it to give it a bit more of a contrast and give the viewer some more visual details to spot when you look at the miniatures from a close-up distance. After Dawnstone is applied, there is only Admin Stratum Grey on the goblet wing structure up on the banner. Some lines here and there to further these kinda non-metallic metal vibe. Really, really bad non-metallic metal vibe, but I think it fits the banner well. After this, all the black parts are done and we go to Metal Areas Part 2. All the golden metal parts are painted in Balthazar Gold. And from this step on, it's very important, just prevent overspill. I mean, you can repair overspill the paint, but if you take the time, the patience, I think 
you can save up time on the long run. After the Balthazar gold is dried completely, grab a bit of Nihilac Oxide and pour it down on these golden parts. Cause I don't want them golden, I want them a bit bronzy, brassy. So Nihilac Oxide as an additional contrast color works out well here. After Oxide is right completely I apply Rune Lord Brass as a highlight color on all these elements where the oxidation is rubbed away and the light hits the metal parts. Now I rework all the bone and wood areas where I might have overspilled while painting black and red and uh, here and there maybe some pigments has overspilled so just a bit of repairing with steel legion trap again before we go to the wood areas on the shields and the lances and there will go a highlight of rakal the flesh on the outer corners of the wooden plank structure to simulate a light wood type and simulate a bit of a wooden structure here and there. I think you can see it on the lances at this point better. And to top it off it's some small lines of pallet witch flash to give even more the illusion of worn wood. After this, let's go to the bones. The meat and bones of an undead army. <laughs> Pun intended. I pick out Bane Blade Brown for a light color gradient to the Steel Legion drab and paint all the areas that are facing upwards or outwards from the skeleton's position and try to leave some of the recesses in these previous color steel legion wrap and some small line on the rib cage. This one is not sculpted but I think I could paint where the color needs to be. Next up Karak Stone. Pick out the surfaces that are on the upper and side parts of the miniature where the light would hit even more than on the Bane Blade brown parts and maybe you can excuse that I go on the very right side of the screen here cause as I said previously it's very hard to stay in focus. Some final highlights with, with Shapti Bone on the bone parts as you might recognize by the color's name. The final highlight, the upper parts that are hit by light and all the edges and sharp edges on the bone parts, some of the knees, the uh, end parts of the leg bones, the elbows, the fingers get some of the paint to give all these small details some more definition. After this step, I want to apply some variation, some color gradation to the skeletons and so I mix up Seraphim Sapia with Lamia Medium on a nearly 50-50 mix and apply this glaze here and there on bone parts, on random bone parts to give the illusion of a corroded and discolored bone on um, some miniatures you can pick out all the bone areas to give it a color variation and on some miniatures you can only pick maybe the head and the right hand and partial glazing steps. After that I apply dried bark on the whole base or better to say earth parts of this miniatures 
and uh, the little leather thingies on the horse sides and uh, apply another tiny detail of morphing brown there. The horse hooves need to be gray, I think. I don't know if, if this is uh, the realistic way or if the hooves would uh, be on a lighter bony color on a horse skeleton. I think this is a detail that needs to be painted. So I apply ash and gray on all the hooves and get to a small highlight with Dawnstone. This is applied on these ragged effects just like on the textile structures. And after this one, there is not much to do. There is only the metal parts, the silvery metal parts that needs to be painted for a bit more of a contrast. And I use Rune Fang Steel here to pick out the sharp edges where maybe the rust is rubbed off or a stroke of a enemy's blade has rubbed off the upper layer of the rust. And so the blank metal is showing through. As you can see here, pick out some of the edges, random patterns of small dots and lines and paint in some lines that go into the surface to give this illusion of a rusted up metal. Apply some metal colors on these small studs on the uh, horse's harness and uh, you're good to go, I think. This is everything I do on my miniatures and I think you can apply these color techniques on all the heavy armored skeletons on horseback or on foot. And here is the base that I fit this stripe on. It is a base 50 to 20 millimeters and it's a thickness of 1.5 millimeters. I purchased this one at my battleground. This is an MDF base perfect for the use in War Master the miniature game. I hope you like this tutorial and uh, can follow the steps through. If you want to show me some of your results, just paint up your minis and uh, take a picture. And uh, maybe you can post a link in the comment section down below. If there are any requests for other miniatures of the excellent miniatures miniature range, there uh, is the way to post it in the comments below so you can say hey dizzy paint some zombies or paint some bretonians and i try to get it done for you and um, paint the miniatures that you most likely want me to be painted thank you for watching i will show you some more uh, links here for the High Elves and the Dwarven Slayer tutorial. And uh, we'll see again in the next one. Till then, I am Dizzyfinger, out for today. Keep on wargaming!